Hello everybody and welcome back to Lynn. This is a part three of my playthrough of this visual novel horror game. So we're gonna go back and I think we're talking to Susie, I believe. Oh no, it's announcer. We're sorry to announce that the train departing from platform two to London Waterloo is delayed by approximately I've heard a sign. I have a sigh. And glance at the electronic display board. The train times blink up bright orange against black. Susie lives a couple stops away. It should only take five minutes to get there, give or take. But there's some kind of holdup. None of the trains are running on time. For London, that's pretty rare. People always joke that it'll be the end of the world before trains start arriving on time. But the trains and buses in London are pretty punctual. Even when there aren't there are so so many other trains and buses that follow similar routes, it doesn't really matter. I wonder if someone threw themselves on to the track. Wow, that's a dark thing to think about. When there's a big delay like this, there's usually that's usually the case. Wow. It's a fact of life I've been aware of since I was five. That's actually kind of depressing. Yeah, if you if you know about people throwing themselves on like train tracks when you're five, that's pretty that's a pretty scary thing to think about. I frown, tapping my foot against the platform. A bag of chip sticks rolls past me. They bounce by the breeze. The packaging glimmers in the sun. Is it supposed to be chip sticks? There are enough bins around. Why do people litter? Are they really that compelled to cause petty crimes? Oh well. It's got nothing to do with me. I glance up and down the platform again. It's a lot quieter than it usually is. I managed to miss rush hour. The businessmen I'm so used to are already at work. There's a lot of music going on right now. They were just a handful of stranglers, of stragglers like me, mostly dressed in casual clothes. Most of the pedestrians milling about, glancing at the train's times, seem to be around my age. They're probably all in year 11 too. We're all on study leave until the beginning of June. And speaking of people my age, I see a girl, a very familiar girl, a girl who looks like a lot like me, but at the same, decidedly isn't. She was in my dream last night, watching me with cold and um, impersonal eyes while I squirmed. She looked so tidy and presentable as per unusual. Her black hair is neat and straight. She's wearing casual clothes, but she manages to make them look sophisticated, like a model in a fashion magazine. I wonder how expensive her clothes are. It probably costs her much, much more than mine. Lynn catches me staring at Blinks, and she looks at me, tilting her head on the one side. Is she going to come over? Does she want to say hello? I hope she doesn't. I'd rather swallow a sewing needle than speak to her. I never talked to Lynn in school. I certainly don't want to talk to her outside of it. Why is she at the train station at this time, anyway? She doesn't have any friends to visit. I know because she's been in the same form group as me since year 7. Maybe Miss Madley thought we'd get along since we look similar. And I'd never thought, I've never seen her talk to anyone. She sits by herself, staring into, out into space. Not that she seems to mind. What a weird girl. I really can't stand her. In fact, I think I hate her. But I've said that already, haven't I? This is weird. Oh, look at that eye. That's. Very unsettling. Excuse me? I'm hearing it's you lay there. This is. Okay, this audio is creepy as hell. I can't believe it. Susie sits on the edge of her bed, clutching a pink heart shaped pillow tightly in her chest. Susie's chest is bigger than mine. Maybe that's why she's so popular. Could you stop whispering in my ear, please? It's very concerning to me. 
Oh. Thank you. Sometimes when I look at Susie, I can't help but feel jealous. She's not just bustier than me. She oh, oh, when you come back in the middle of my sentence, really? She's not just bustier than me, she's prettier too. Her clothes are nicer, her parents are richer. Susie's bedroom is really, really cute. It's pale pastel pink with a few stuffed toys lying on the bed and a rose-shaped rug on the floor. Susie's bedroom is a little childish in a way, but I think it suits her. It must be perfect backdrop for her live streams. What does she do during her streams anyways? Does she talk in Japanese and do cute dances? I don't know. I don't even want to know. I, I, I think your friend has a bad case of the weeaboo. Just saying. But Susie's expressions right now isn't very cute. She's angry about something. Positively fuming. How could Aki ask me to do that? That's so degrading. What do you want you to do? Oh, all kinds of things like, you know, stuff on webcam, this and that. Susie grips the pillow even tighter. Ugh. I don't know how much about online relationships or offline relationships for that matter. So my advice might not be useful, but you're not even old enough, right? Like that matters. Give her the times, Lynn. Am I really that outdated? It's not my fault. It's hard to keep up with the current trends, and I don't have a laptop. Not like Susie. There's no computer in our house, but it, it's an old box scene from the two, 2000s. It takes forever to start up, and the internet connection is always gutting and slow. I've only ever used it for homework. I certainly never used it to try and have an elect relationship with an Asian boy. Man, rather. On the other hand, on the other side of the world. Jess would find out, or worse, dad, and how embarrassing would that be? But it doesn't sound like Susie wants an elect relationship either. I don't know much about it, but wouldn't doing things on woodcam um, sounds a bit sad, doesn't it? We're certainly never taught about it in sex ed. Well, yeah, there's nobody actually here, so you just need to imagine a bit. A at least I have a good imagination. This is um, I I this is not for the children. I I uh, I think. No, no, nothing. Sh shit. Uh, Su Su Susie throws the pillow to one side and adjusts her pigtails. She strikes a pose. I'm everybody's cute little sister, Suzumi. Is that what she calls herself on on like stream? That's her stage. Oh, it is her stage name. Okay. But can you really call it that when she doesn't perform on stage? Her stage is her bedroom. I clap politely all the same, and I don't know why. I feel obligated. Why do you do that? You sound like a completely different person. It's a part of the act. Everyone loves it. Susie rolls her eyes. I think she's wearing false eyelashes and circle lenses. Everybody about Susie seems a little too big and not entirely real. It's like watching an actress on TV. I thought Aki was different, but maybe... He only likes me because of Susie, me too. See, that's the one thing about like online personas. Uh, when people try to get into your life more, and that's not like com the complete truth about who you are, then it starts becoming a problem when um, they just start asking for more and more. Oh, but he's writing music. Yeah, yeah, not for free. Guys don't help crew or young girls out for free. They don't? Of course not. People are always thinking about themselves. I agree with that, actually. Not that I'm much better. I mean, I'm using them too. Scandalous! Susie sighs. There are strings attached. You mean you have to do this and that? Yeah, this and that. Susie lies down in her bed and stares up at the ceiling. She must be must, mussing up her pigtails, but she doesn't seem to care. The cute little sister Susie me is gone. Now it's just Susie. It was always just Susie. I don't mind playing around with him that much, I guess. I can't 
I can be kind of fun, and I have, and I like the attention, but I don't know. You can, you can go too far. Did he make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm on my period. Why do you, why do you want to do, you know, intimate things? This is not what I expected when I started playing this game. Like, this is completely out the window. Susie makes little quotation marks with her her fingers. I guess there's a limit to how intimate intimate moments can really be and when you're se separated by thousands of miles of ocean. When I'm bleeding profusely, my stomach hurts? Uh, oh, um... See, see, Linen is just as uncomfortable as I am and I have to read this to you. I have to read this to all of you. I look down at my thighs and start to blush. Did, did you want to see it? Oh my god. What did I get myself into? He always asks to see it. Oh shit. I said I don't want to, but he was so in insistent, and I was like, whatever. If it'll make you shut up, I don't really care about it, but it's gross, you know. Susie pulls a face. I felt fine at the time, I think. I don't know. It didn't really feel good, but whatever. He seems to be enjoying himself, and I told him if it was fine and so as long as one of us did, but... Susie bites her lower lip and very soft and shimmery, she was... She must be wearing lip gloss. I don't know, when I woke up this morning, I felt kind of... I can't explain it. Dirty. She holds her pillow and even closer to her chest, and she's staring up at the ceiling. Her hair fans out at the bed like a halo. I don't want to do it, so why did I agree to it? Why did I let him push me around like that? I'm not a pushover, I'm going... I'm good at sticking up for myself, usually so. I don't get it. He wasn't even here, it wasn't like he could make me do anything. There was nothing he could really have done. Maybe you felt like you had to? Why'd you say that? Well, he is a lot older than you, and hasn't... He... And hasn't he been doing all these favors for you? He bought you a lot of expensive clothes. Yeah, I guess, that's what I thought, maybe, I think. He did a lot of... for me, so... Susie shakes her head. That's dumb. I didn't know him anything. I don't think so either. Especially not when I'm on my period. This is... I, I don't think this, this game was meant for me to play, but you know what? Three episodes in and two hours into gameplay. We'll see it through. You guys are stupid. You know what? I agree with that statement. You don't understand how girls feel. Shouldn't he feel flattered I'm going out with him at all? See, that's kind of like a hard thing to say because if you're not like happy with the relationship, well, like if you're happy with the relationship, but oh my god, the music just stopped out of nowhere. But if that's just how it is, then you don't have to worry about like things like that. Don't be pushed into anything you don't want to do. Whatever. Susie suddenly gets to her feet. She throws her heart-shaped pillow at her bed. It hits the headboard with a dull thud and falls limply against the pale pink mattress. I didn't bring you here to talk about boring shit like this. Language, Susie, language. Lynn, you're going you're going to be my camera woman for the day, right? Uh, all right. I've been practicing a dance lately. It's pretty popular. Oh my god, that's you can't just throw the audio back in like that. You gotta ease me into it, that's just creepy as hell. I should be able to rack up a decent amount of views on Nico Nico if I record it. And I wanna do it outside too. It reminds me of like, if you ever seen the, the little anime girl. Nico Nico Ni! And that's, that's just one thing I thought of that's funny. Uh, outside? Yeah, outside. You got a problem with that? Not really, but... I've been Susie's camera woman for the past few months, ever since she started to gain some serious traction online. It's a very lucrative business. Not. That is a lie. It's a false statement. Fake news. Susie learns to dance and puts a, cut, a cute outfit on. And then we go into her back garden. 
Since it performs while I film her, trying to stop my hands from shaking with an old Canon camera that used to belong to her dad and film her. Susie's dad goes bird watching sometimes. There's an abundance of old unused cameras laying around Susie's house. She makes good use of them. But I've never filmed Susie beyond the boundaries of her garden. Are you serious? Are you sure this is fine? Yeah, it's fine. I have no problem with it. Videos are more popular if you're doing them in public, like a at a park, or and the scenery is nicer. These kind of videos usually get more views. You can pull people in sh the shock favor too. Like I did this cute anime dance in public. Oh my goodness! I guess she's done her research. Rihanna's little sister Susumi persona. Susie's pretty calculating. She'll do almost anything to boost her views and increase her fan base. I'm impressed, but. If you dance outside, people will stare at you. So what? I feel like a few stares won't kill me. They might insult you. I can deal with it. What if they throw things? People don't throw things in Hyde Park. It would be respectable. It wouldn't be respectable. I feel like pointing out that the most young girls don't dance to cute Japanese songs in Hyde Park either. But I don't. Instead, I, s I say my voice is unpleasantly whinny. Even in my own ears. Susie. Hey, don't you Susie me. You're not the one who has to dance. I am. They won't say anything mean to you. But you don't have to. I do. It, it'll be uh, good for my career. I'm trying to make money out of this. It's not all fun in games, Lynn. This is so meta right now. Because this character right here does videos for a living. And I, well, definitely not making a living, but anyways, I can deal with it. After talking about Aki yesterday, I've had it up to here. Susie gestures to her neck. With gross guys. If anybody's rude to me, I'll make them regret it. I'm not sure how Susie will make them regret it exactly. She's taller than me, but she's not that tall. She's so skinny, too. But Susie's quite fierce. For a few months, she's convinced me. She's dating a guy who's in his 30s. She must know what she's doing. Right? What's this? I'm laying on my bed, not doing anything in particular, just staring at the ceiling. I should probably be studying, but I can't even bring myself to look at my textbooks. The mere thought of the crackling them uh, of crackling them open makes me feel ill. So I don't look at them. I keep staring at the ceiling. I think about Susie. I think about Aki. I think about Jess. I even think about Jess's unborn baby. I wonder what she's doing. She's going to call him. Jess has a scan a while back. The doctor said her baby was going to be a boy. I asked Jess if she was going to name her baby after the dad, but and Jess let out the colossal snort and rolled her eyes as far back into her skull. I, I thought they'd fall out. See, that's just, like, the standard, like, teenager response. I didn't press the issue, but I decided to take the that as a no. Our house is cramped enough as it is, and there's only two bedrooms. Mom and Dad is in one, and Jess and I in the other. I've never had my room my own. I envy Susie, who has such a nice big bedroom filled with things. She's not, she's the only child, and, she'll, and she doesn't have any brothers or sisters to worry about. I'm sure Susie's parents have more than enough room in their house to slot a newborn baby, but I can't ask them to take Jasset's kid. I don't think Susie's parents like me very much, let alone my bastard baby brother. Yeesh, that's harsh. That still leaves one question. Where will the baby go? Where will you fit? And what will Dad say when the baby is been born? I won't be able to pretend Jas isn't pregnant. At, and now when the evidence is starting to, is staring him right in the face, will he lose his temper? What if he makes a scene at the hospital? What if he starts shouting at Jas? I can hardly bear to think about it. Maybe I shouldn't think about it. I don't want to, but... L Lynn, are you busy? There's a dull knocking against my bedroom door. It's Dad. Lynn. Hey, Lynn. He knocks again. He isn't knocking very loudly, but I know Dad well enough that this could be violent at any given second. I sit up, brushing my fingers through my hair, and hasten to answer him. I'm free. You can come in. 
The door handle turns, the lock cir clicks. I swallow. Dad stands in the doorway in all his glory. He's a huge, hulking figure over six feet tall with broad shoulders and hands large enough to crush whole walnuts. When I was a little girl, I couldn't imagine there was existing anybody bigger than him. I was wrong. Dad isn't even tall, not compared to other people. He's a little above average, I guess, and the, muscle, the muscles he's developed through the years of manual labor add to his immediately uh, intimidating physique, but they're bigger men. I don't live with any men like that, and if I did, I haven't learned to be scared of them at all. Not in the same way I've learned to be scared of Dad. Hey, Lynn. But Dad doesn't look very intimidating right now. He lingers in the doorway and is strangely guilty, like he expects to be get scolded. Can I come in? Um, sure. I scoot to one side of the bed, opening a space for Dad to take a seat. He does so, but not before closing the door behind him. My fingers curl into the fists against my my better judgment. I wonder why. Self-defense? You're not cross with me, are you? I'm not cross. Why? You've been a quiet. You've been a bit quiet lately, and you hardly said anything at dinner. You hardly ate anything either. Oh. I didn't think he noticed. I thought he was too busy listening to all Jess's faults and flaws. Rude, ungrateful, careless, irresponsible, inconsiderate, prideful. The list goes on and on. I wasn't hungry. Are you sure? I think you've lost a bit of weight lately. Really? Hmm. Your cheeks are hollow hollowing out. You look like a little, a little skeleton. Maybe it's true. I suffered from nightmares for as long as I can remember. They've been growing more and more pronounced lately. The nightmare last night about the strange show, the stage show, and the insects was rather tame in comparison. How can I e expect to eat after such awful dreams? I'm fine, really. I'm not hungry, that's all. You're not some kind of diet, are you? I shake my head. Good. I'm not a girl, but I know you're into silly stuff like that. Jess was the same at your age, but... Dad grits his teeth together for a few moments. I worry he's going to explode, but then he exhales heavily and his postures relax. It's not important. We're not talking about Jess. Let's talk about you. There isn't much to talk about, really. Nonsense, you're my little girl. I really am little compared to Dad. I don't see how my littleness makes me any more interesting, but I keep quiet. It's the best I keep quiet around Dad. Your exams are coming up, nervous? A bit. Well, it's normal to be nervous. I was nervous when I had an exams, too. It's part of being a kid. It ruffles the top of my head with, with a big and cautious hand, and it feels like I'm being mauled by a crab. You'll be fine, Lynn. You've been studying, haven't you? I glance up on my bedside table, stacking high with Jess's old textbooks that I haven't bothered to open. I swallow. I don't know what hurts more, Dad's large hand on top of my head or the weight of his expectations. Yeah, um, I, I, I've been studying. Good girl. As long as you try your best, that's all I ask for. I, I'll try. I know, I don't mean it. Is that what you're doing with Susie today? Love? Studying? Yeah. That's nice. I knew she was a good influence, and I'm glad you're hanging out with the right sort of kids, Slynn. Not like Jess. She was also going off with that awful Vaughn girl, though she's so much older than Jess. I should have been stricter, told her enough times, but Jess doesn't listen. She doesn't? Does she? Never, ha never has done. Never will. Even when I shout at her, it makes me wonder what the point of all this is. He sighs. What kind of father am I? I can't even discipline my own children. I don't think anybody could discipline Jess. She's a law unto herself. My worm comment brings a smile to Dad's lips. 
It's rare that I see Dad smile, but when he does, it's unusual around me. What's usually around me? I'm not trying to boast. That's just how things are. Jess never, Jess never, uh, Jess never makes Dad smile. She, she just makes him shout and spit and rage. You're right. Totally right. You're often right, Lynn. I don't know. I do. Don't sell yourself short. I was like Jess when I was her age. I thought I knew my best. I never listened to anybody. Least of all my parents. I was a shithead. I made a lot of mistakes when I was raising Jess. So did Mary. Mary must be the mother. I don't want to make the same mistakes with you. I want, I want you to study hard. I want you to get a job. I want you to make something of yourself. You know. Don't you, sweetie? All of a sudden, my throat feels dry. My head pulsates. Full of millipedes is my mind, dear wife. I think that's from Shakespeare. Macbeth. We're studying it in school. At least I remember something. I think the dream that you had the night before helps you remember millipedes. Too bad. All the things I remember are completely worthless. But why am I telling you all this? You're a good girl. Smart girl. You might not be at good at maths or science, but I know you'll, you'll ace English for sure. The English teacher always says nice things about you at the parent evenings. Dad ruffles the top of my head. You'll do alright, love. I have faith in you. You'll make your old man proud. Jess never did. But you're different. I hope you don't let him down. Ooh, that's interesting. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. No, this is uh, my part three of of Lynn. I'm really enjoying this. Like, the story is really holding together, and I'm really interested of in seeing how it um how it continues. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.